David lives near Durham City and has decades of experience in quality control and sales in the tea industry. Born in Middlesbrough, he's lived in Durham for over four decades and is a dedicated, lifelong Newcastle Football Club supporter. I was class myself as pretty normal. I lived in a lovely house in a lovely area. I had a good job with good money, had a nice car, uh, and it can't happen to anybody. Mm. It really can. It just takes a trigger point. Pal TV met Dave at Durham Action on Single Housing, a charity providing temporary accommodation and help to those who are homeless in Durham and those who are about to become so. In 2021, David found himself facing homelessness, struggling as well with alcohol addiction and mental health issues. If it had gone on another month, I don't think I would have been here, so I really don't. Because I didn't know, but when I was drinking in that hotel, about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, I was going for walks. I didn't know where I was. But I came back one day and I was talking, and I jumped in the river, apparently. That's how bad I got. Dave's story isn't unique. In 2022, on any given night, 271,000 people spent the night homeless, including 122,000 children. And in the Northeast, the issue of homelessness is particularly profound. A January 2023 report by Shelter found that the region had the greatest proportion of homeless households in England. While homelessness is complex in its forms and extremely difficult to accurately measure, in this documentary, we explore the issue of homelessness in County Durham. We speak with students volunteering to help those facing homelessness, local non-profit organisations tirelessly working to take homeless people off the street, and also those who have faced homelessness themselves. But first, we wanted to understand university students and local residents' perceptions of homelessness, so we went out into Durham's Market Square. We asked local residents and students whether they regularly saw much homelessness in Durham City. Not really, I don't see many homeless people, I see one or two, mm. but not as much as the major cities like Newcastle. Yeah. Um, in Durham, I'd say maybe less so than places like Newcastle. I've noticed a lot more Newcastle over the last few months. Um, I'm not sure about Durham, to be honest. I've not seen like a massive amount in the city centre, but that doesn't necessarily mean that mm. there's not. Yes. <laughs> Not really. Yes. Um, you see people in sort of the shops, entrances, things like that. Uh, definitely, to be fair, like you, you do walk through the centre of town and it's, it is kind of depressing to see like there is definitely a problem in Durham. Um, yeah, yeah, quite a lot, yeah. Having understood the public's perceptions of homelessness in Durham, we spoke with the student-led branch of Under One Sky. They seek to confront stereotypical assumptions about homelessness and challenge the stigma and fear of engaging with their friends on the street. They hand out essential items and resources like clothing and food, but claim that their most important function is one that costs nothing, talking and engaging with their friends on the street. Their approach prioritizes making connections, restoring self-pride and dignity, and emphasizing our shared humanity. We basically wanna engage with people on the street and treat them as human. We want to connect them as people and befriend them, hear their stories, um, share in their hard times, but share in their good times and just spend time with them. Give it, we, we provide practical stuff. We provide soup, uh, coffee, tea, hand warmers, socks, gloves, hats, but more importantly, we spend the majority of our time just talking to them. And this is really the crux of our, of our mission, changing the narrative, changing the way that we see street connected people and are you know, deconstructing stereotypes. It's pretty simple. We want people to come on, on walks with us. We want them to look at a homeless person, a homeless friend even, and not just kind of see through them and not look at them awkwardly, but to actually engage them and smile at them and, and see their humanity. And we're not naive. Like we, I've got things wrong, Ross has got things wrong. Even in the language I'm using is, is sometimes wrong. And I'm aware that there's an element of awkwardness around this stuff um, because we just don't, we, we can't understand it sometimes. And that, I completely sympathise and empathise with that, but that shouldn't be a barrier. 
through the work we've been doing, we've been, really been aware of actually these people are really similar to us. I'm 21, nearly 22, Ross is 20. The guy we saw on the street was 23. Um, and that hits quite hard because it really reminds us what we're doing, that this is a guy who is just like us, who um, has had the right things in his life go wrong. Because every person who's on the street has a story and that's how they've got to the, the street. It's not, it's not like that, it's, it's a long process. Um, and homelessness is, is the end point of that. There are a range of different organisations which help um, homeless people in County Durham. And in Durham City we have Sanctuary 21, uh, which is run by the Salvation Army. And we have Durham Action for Student Housing. We collected about 60 duvets from Collingwood College. And so I emailed all these organisations asking if we could share the quotes with them. And this is to show that, you know, we're all with open arms here. It's not a competition of who can, who can be the mm. best. And we're all trying to help each other. We're all trying to help our street connected friends in any way possible. And I think just linking together is the best way of achieving this. After hearing how Durham organisations were working together on the issue of homelessness, we followed up with Dash and their student volunteers sorting through donated kills. So we're doing kind of a mix of uh, fundraising and volunteering. So uh, this year so far has been quite heavily on fundraising because we're helping a specific property called uh, Bradfield Crescent, which is just around the corner from here. The aim with that is to redo the house, uh, make it a much more pleasant place for the people who are in it to live. At the moment we're fundraising for that, but also um, we're here today to do some volunteering as well. Um, and hopefully we can go back in the new year um, and uh, say to everyone else kind of this is what we're doing we'd love you, for you to get involved whether that's volunteering here making hampers for people or um, going into the house and you know painting or stripping up the floors and stuff like that. Because I know we've had um, our own uh, housing crisis in Durham students but a lot of people they're not yeah not fortunate to um, you know, be in a place where they have a, a stable and, and clean house so trying to make um, a house a home I guess mean these people will want to stay and then just get get back on their feet really. We do have, so we've got about 45 bed spaces across County Durham. The main services we offer um, are around housing and benefits, um, so we make sure that people have got benefits in place so they can start to save money to move on to their own tenancy. That's the main goal that we have. So at the minute, a lot of landlords, if people are private renting, they're wanting to get people out. They just give them a section 21, which is no fault of their own, um, and they're getting put in the position of being homeless just purely because it's more rent, it's more money that they can't afford, so they're getting put into a homeless situation themselves. I mean, I definitely think working here, it opens your eyes that you realise that anyone is at the risk of being homeless, and um, that there's, there's loads of different reasons why people end up homeless, and especially rough sleeping. It only takes that one thing that you don't have the money and you can end up on the streets. It, it, you don't, I walk past people now and don't think, or they're, they're homeless for whatever reason, it could be literally anything. We've had a few people who's came in and who are residents now actually who said that they didn't even realise that they were ho like they were hidden homeless, even sofa surfing. They're just seeing it as staying at a friend's um, or they're going here, there and everywhere and they don't realise that they are actually homeless. It was at Dash that we met Dave. It was generously agreed to share his story with us. Well, I was actually born in Middlesbrough back in 1970, thank God. Uh, then I moved to Durham. I lived there for 24 years, then I got married. I was married 20, another 24 years. I got divorced in 2018. I met another girl in Wall's End. That's when things start to go wrong. Uh, arguments, uh, stress levels are getting, and I just, I just flipped one day. Uh, I had a nervous breakdown, so from then on, I had nowhere to stay. I was staying in some hotels in Newcastle, which were really, really, really rough, and they were costing a fortune. I was just then I started drinking mm. uh, to the stage where it was just out of control, and I'm talking like two bottles of whiskey a night. I was just in, I had no coping facilities or nothing. Yeah. Uh, if it hadn't been for my mum and dad's money, I don't know where I would have been. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. 
plus me and my brother got well over 150,000 each. Uh, that all disappeared. Mm. It would have been too much different. Yeah. That was just another world. That really was. It's, it's horrible. Mm. I still think about it now. I'm so embarrassed. Because mm. I've always held the position of trust and team leader and like a managerial role. Yeah, I went through a detox course. Uh, got discharged on 23rd of December last year. And I haven't had a drink now for nearly a year. And basically, I came to Dash because there was, there was nothing else available for us. My brother had to look into it. But Rachel, one of the girls in there, she's been so supportive. She'll do anything for you as long as you show her willing mm. to support yourself. She's brilliant. I love it a bit. Mm. I really do. She's canny. Would you describe it as sort of a community, Dash? Oh, um, yes, very much so. They're friendly, they're approachable. As I say, it really can just affect anybody. Mm. It can. I mean, when I was in hospital, I have got on with this guy and he eventually confided and he was a social worker. Yeah. And he ended up in hospital. Mm. A mental breakdown. But he was in, I think he was in a much worse situation than me. He had absolutely nothing at all. And it just hits you like that. It really does. It just drops on you. And the feeling of being like helpless, relying on others is, is not nice. It's not. It's really not nice. But I'm hoping March time, my knee heals up properly, that I'll get a, a job again. If, you know, if you're really struggling, there is always hope. Uh, there is always hope for somebody. No matter how low you get, just reach out. They will they will help. Don't suffer in silence. Do not. Reach out, get help. Both like in accommodation and mentally through the NHS and stuff like that. But Dash, out there I recommend them. They've been brilliant. It's been a struggle the last three three years, but I'll get there. With a number of charitable organisations operating in the area, we wanted to know what local government was doing to support our friends like Dave. So we spoke with Councillor Alan Shield, who's responsible for equality and inclusion at County Durham Council, whose role it is to engage with homelessness inside the county. Just to give you some facts and figures, over the last three years, we have about 7,500 people come to us on an annual basis who say they're either homeless or threatened with homelessness. Mm. That's re remained pretty static. Um, then of those people, a lot of people just need some early advice and help, so which is given on okay. Um, and what we then do is assess people to go on to, to have a homelessness assessment. That's usually about 2,500 a year. The demographics up until probably a year ago was 80% single males. Um, the main reasons for homelessness in County Durham have remained static for three years. So the top three reasons are loss of private rent or tenancy. So this is where the landlord will serve what's called a Section 21 notice. And that can be, I need the property back. It's not really, it's, it's, it's very difficult. You may have seen some coverage panoramas done lately where families have been put because of the Section 21 notice. That's always top. And that's predominantly where our single males live sometimes in the private rented sector because they can't get access to social housing owner occupations out their age so often they're in private rented tenancies the second reason is domestic abuse and the third reason is parents no longer willing to accommodate so again that's where a lot of single both females as well but predominantly males will come to us and say my family won't let me live there anymore i don't think we've seen the end of the cost of living crisis i think it'll be with us for another two years i don't think we've seen the level of increase uh, in the rate of inflation, I expect that to probably top at about 12% and last for another at least 18 months to two years. And that's why Durham County Council have been very proactive in trying to support our level of communities. When I started in housing 20 year plus, a housing officer role or a homelessness officer role is very different to what it is now. It's kind of bordering on like the social work role. Mm. They take on someone and they do a lot more with them than finding them a home. It is a much broader role, and I feel like when we advertise jobs now, we shouldn't call it a housing officer because it's not that. So I think there's a perception and some education today as well to the public to say, you know, please come here to help you. We want to find you a home. 
mm. rather than waiting until it's too late because that's when we have people in to year or, or, or we can't move them on and then sometimes they will end up back on the streets anybody if there's a significant change in their circumstance could become homeless so don't look disdainfully at people who are living on the streets for whatever reason because it could be you one day or it could be somebody within your family one day or it could be a person that you know one day these people need that level of support from student groups supporting the homeless and working to dismantle stereotypical perceptions of homelessness to organizations like dash working tirelessly to offer safe and secure accommodation it's clear that there is an appetite among students and the local community to offer a helping hand but nevertheless life on the streets remains hard as the cost of living soars, rents boom and there remains a lack of social housing, there's a fear among many we spoke to that an increase in homelessness is on the horizon. In particular, our conversation with David highlighted that when we think of homelessness, we often fail to recognise hidden homelessness, the kind that often goes unseen and is often forgotten. We can also struggle to make connections with people who seem so far removed from our own situation. Yet, it is so important to remind ourselves of what we share and of the amazing things that can happen when students and organisations come together and connect with our friends on the street. If you've been moved by what you've seen and you want to help out, there are links to Dash and Under One Sky in the description. Under One Sky in particular are looking for both donations and also for students to join them on their walkabouts in Durham. <laughs>